Yeah, we are live. So hello, hello everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome again to a brand new episode of the Ultimate Cloud Learning Show by K21 Academy, where you learn cloud from the experts. Today we've got somebody who is who has you know kind of uh, gotten into the tech industry, the cloud domain from a non-tech background, at least from the starting POV. So a lot of people who are out there who ask this question quite a lot, that whether you can get into the tech coming from a non-tech background, I think this man is the right man to answer the, answer your question. I, I guess you can see from the screen as well, he's got 100 certi 176 certifications to his name, a lot of them, and it's a variety of certifications when we look at it as well. It's not just one domain. So definitely we're going to be getting in depth about it as well. This is He's a YouTuber, he's a freelancer as well, and has done quite extensive, uh, you know, I would say work in three, all the three different domains that he work in as well. So guys, make sure if you have any questions regarding DevOps or Solutions Architect, make sure you put them in the chat window and we'll be picking them up as we go as well. So wel welcome Sandeep again for, and thank you very much for accepting the invite. Thank, thank you Shivan for inviting and inviting and having the session. Yeah, definitely. So I, I, I'll uh, start from the very start. Like you have had a quite an elaborative career and uh, you're a perfect example as well. If someone wants to get into the tech domain as a whole, a cloud domain as a whole, uh, from a non-tech background, how they can do it. And that it is a very possible thing to happen. So could you tell us a little about that? Definitely, definitely. So first of thing, I think many, many fear actually that I'm a non-tech background person doing say support job or maybe some other can I move to tech? And that's a very uh, common question people have because they're getting paid less, not getting growth and all. Same happened for yeah. me also. I yeah. saw the growth is not in the profession I'm supposed to happen. Like I'm supposed to go through. And I decided I have to, like my future is in my hand and I have mm -hmm. to work hard for that. So I started okay. uh, first doing software engineering from Ramkrishna Mission. Then I did mm -hmm. uh, MCA from uh, like IGNU. I think everybody know open source. Mm -hmm. IGNU, the Indira Gandhi yeah. National Open University. And okay. there I started my uh, tech journey, like at least the learning journey. And mm -hmm. I didn't wait for like to get uh, the degree and then start because, you know, yep. that will be disastrous, at least for me, Definitely. because I'm completely mm -hmm. from non-tech background. So what yeah. I did extra was that I didn't, uh, like it's a, it's a, you know, the open university, you don't have to go to college. <laughs> so what I did extra, yeah. I joined companies. I show them, see, I'm actually in university. I'm studying uh, so the master of computer application. Mm -hmm. you, if you guys like have any interest in a very good talented you know, tech guy you are looking for, hire me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this trick work for me. Like I'm mm -hmm. from non-tech guy, just because I'm <laughs> doing MCA or degree, they have some, they got some confidence and they hired me. First salary okay. was not that mentionable, but <laughs> started, <laughs> no, but it's okay. You just start, we started learning. So I started joining yeah, a small definitely. company in Kolkata. It's called software mm -hmm. maniac solution. There I learned for six, seven months. And then, you know, what happens to get more better salary. I got around, I think, 100% of salary in other companies. <laughs> so there I go. There also I learned for around, uh, I think, one year. There uh -huh. also I saw to, to grow more, I have to go some bigger firm. So I go to mm -hmm. even bigger firm. They gain the salary person become at least 40 to 50% up. So I make jump within a reasonable time, one year or say half a year, uh, based on mm -hmm. my uh, expectation, I did the changes. And that's how I started learning a lot of things from many people, the seniors. At the same time, I got promotion also. So my salary okay. and my experience going up and up and up. So that's, that was yeah. my uh, strategy at the time. And that mm -hmm. worked really well. Uh, before okay. leaving the company, I uh, last, oh, I, of course, I last worked in a uh, normal company in Kolkata. And there I have learned a lot of things. And it hit me that, okay, I'm uh, doing all the works and I'm getting a lot less than what I'm working on. You know what happened as a, you know, freelancer, uh, you get more than normal employees. That happened. Yeah, so I thought, okay, let's, let's start the, the solo trainer kind of thing. Now become a freelancer okay. and make more money. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, it was tough because uh, the, what happened, you know, when you work as a, a normal engineer, the marketing okay. guys and everyone uh, do the mm -hmm. software common analysis and everything for you. Marketing mm -hmm. and all. But when you're a freelancer, yeah. you start and you have, you have to go through all the, uh, all the phases from planning to execution and ultimate your uh, final uh, product as the final delivery. Mm -hmm. Then I found out what are the skills I missed. And you okay. see a lot of skills. You have to have marketing yeah. skills. You have to have some uh, programming, really good programming skills. You have to have some database skills and what yeah. not. Of course, the programming is there because I'm, I joined as a web developer at the beginning. Then I made to the cloud and all. So yeah, I, mm -hmm. I found out I have a lot of missing skills. And you see that 176 certification 
is the key to get that knowledge okay. I, at the time uh, linkedin didn't acquire uh, uh, i think this uh, linda so linda was a site where linkedin okay. isn't acquired yet and they're giving the course and the certification so you pass the okay. like read the course and then you do uh, certify at the end they will have some question here and they have to pass it mm-hmm. i and i took this as a challenge so i go to linda i had the peer subscription and i uh, studied crazily and get started getting certification and that okay. was my fill in the blanks so i didn't have the knowledge go to linda and have the knowledge right now it's linkedin learning i think everyone might yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a part so, of linkedin <laughs> so yes now they acquired and they made it linkedin learning so yeah so that's uh, that's how my learning journey started all the certification now out of 170 170 certification all not the uh, industry standards industry under what aws certification azure certification gcp certification or even ck ckd these are the industry so that mm-hmm. i understood after i joined the like i started working in the cloud technologies and devops technologies then mm-hmm. onwards i started doing aws certification i think i already have six aws certification including two professional and uh, other uh, associate and the basic one similarly okay. i have the google certification also as we i didn't have any work requirement so i didn't mm-hmm. got any but maybe in the future yeah. if i got any work i would maybe interested to that way there also so it's always the fill in the blanks and the aws part just to say specifically because I mean, AWS. You know, I should <laughs> mention that. So, uh, I when I started, you know, uh, after becoming a web developer, I started working on smaller web development, then bigger yeah. one and bigger one. I went starting freelancing. I had to do all the stuff, right? Now, yeah. there I had a requirement that it's not just development. You have to host that because and they uh, assign me such a guy who can do it. And okay. the guy I reach out, they given crazy amount as a kind of quotation of the price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is this much money they are earning. What I am doing? <laughs> I started yeah. my cloud learning journey, and I supposed to host in AWS because AWS is big deal at that time. You know, now also, but that time is a very big deal. You have to host in AWS for better scaling. And okay. I uh, simply joined there, and uh, they, uh, I go to their uh, AWS have their groups in Kolkata, in you know, other places like Mumbai. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so there, I I see the people are talking, and all over going my head, like above the head. <laughs> you believe it or not i think around yeah. is a five or uh, six year back uh, story everything mm-hmm. going above my head i decided okay. no it is the it is the best thing right now i can learn and uh, execute and i will get a lot of money and of course learning is important as well as money is also important both are important you have to survive yeah. not just survive you have to exceed the survive mode and you have to be a luxury person if you, are, yeah. you should have a luxury to make the choices okay not out yeah. of necessity but yeah it's a basic necessity then slowly slowly mm-hmm. it will be your better thing so i started learning and i found out okay you have to certify to like to show off your skills that's important when you are going interview as a client uh, like basic requirement become you have to certify in aws as at least as a shit not i mean for the top level senior position now it's that professional but at least as a shit for the basic uh, kind of position level of i thought yeah, yeah. yeah basic level so on a date i tried first time i failed that then there is no shame to you know admit it i failed first time so i took yeah. one year gap like from the certification i learned learned and experimented with the clients i i have existing clients so that helped mm-hmm. me to uh, apply what i'm learning so yeah. i did uh, work with this client i got a lot of knowledge and once i am i am very confident in single i think within 2 to 3 months i already passed all the associate level then okay. i go for the professional immediately which was a mistake to be honest because it is a hell and heaven difference in the mm-hmm. associate degrees and uh, associate certification in the professional one So okay. yeah, it hit it me hard, and of course, thirty thousand rupees lost. Thirty <laughs> thousand rupees. So what I yeah. did, I took a pause, and I work on even more. Be since, but one thing is better happened that you know, uh, since I know why I failed, I found out my missing points. Mm-hmm. I started learning those and applying those as well. I worked okay. for around I think one year for different different companies, just like the freelancer normal work, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, i got the confidence that okay now is the time that i can like uh, uh, i can pass the certification for the provision course and then okay. i uh, go and and, and see it just one week i got the uh, the the i think the provision for the the professional and within in okay. few weeks i got the the level certification i get it uh, provision also so it happened pretty quickly because i had the knowledge so anyone who is thinking about certifying anything first Okay, it's first time you can start like with the practice question. Uh, I think every uh, all edu- educational companies are giving these days. You can go to like a lot of places are there, like Udemy and anywhere. Practice there, and uh, you can give it a single try, 
and you'll see if you are getting hit hard then means you need to have knowledge is better to actually go with some uh, courses and knowledge and experience but if not you are going and you are hitting hard then take a pause and learn more and then you uh, appear you will get a success and it's a it's a, it's a continuous journey because everything changes over time so even i also do the certificate by i also learn new things it's always happening mm -hmm. even now also i'm preparing for the ck and ckd certification even though i have the knowledge i didn't get certification because i had some missing uh, pieces i think now i'm confident so i think this month this will be giving the ck exam so that was the thing okay. so i, so I mean yeah. yeah i mean it's quite i think relatable for a lot of people as well uh, regarding you know the failing the certification exam because what even if we are very much you know technically sound and what we are doing especially in practicality basis because the entire certification exam is constructed in a way that there is a theory part and a practical part there is a lot of miss, uh, you know key points that we are missing out that we specifically don't know as well and it's it's quite you know i think common because last last to last time we had uh, subhashish ghosh who is currently a cloud solutions architect at microsoft and he also shared that he even had failed certain certification not once not twice but even thrice and then eventually cleared that and it i think it's just a part of process where you look back at the failed attempts and see where you know it didn't work out and that's how you learn as well right exactly exactly so you it will be like intermittent failures i will see intermittent because sometimes we'll get multiple times or sometimes but all those actually accumulate you will you are accumulating the knowledge the failure are also a experience that will help you mm -hmm. for the next success so keep trying until you success that always my mantra as well so i i i waited for years even i have given certification for two years just to pass that yeah. special ed certification i still failing so i <laughs> took two year gap i said after two year i'll apply so it's fine it's it's a failing is perfectly normal but uh, think your failure is a step to your success so step yeah. on that failure is a step step it and jump even further so that's that's how i did it and i the moment i fail i say i didn't able to learn something and all i put my 110% effort on it to learn and experience the experience was very important because you're not just learning part you go and learn and no experience you if you don't explore that if you don't revise that if you don't practice that you will forget yeah. maybe after 3 4 days and that mm -hmm. that should not be the case here you have to practice with real clients you have to keep yeah. documentation you have to write articles you have to make videos so that you don't forget what you have learned you have to practice and keep practicing the people the problem is right now people learn it they will forget within few days you go and ask them they don't even remember what they have learned so because that's a reason you have to practice a lot otherwise we may learn something but if in the interview they give a very practical scenario is 100% chance that the, the guy will fail because he didn't practice or apply the knowledge you learn it you yeah. forget it so uh -huh. learn practice apply that will be yeah. the right yeah i i i see like uh, practice as a whole you know plays a lot of role uh, to to kind of sum it all up in uh, you know while you're giving for uh, going for a certification exam right yes yes okay so uh, if you sorry, yeah yeah please continue sorry so, so it's what i'm saying that if someone just learn it and don't practice it mm -hmm. they have they will not get the enough confidence to do that in front of other people or for themselves so learn and practice otherwise you will not gain the confidence it's a self confidence you have to build by practice you can learn anything but so yeah. teachers say there are a lot of teachers right if yeah. they learn something in order to teach other people they have to practice it otherwise they will be not able to teach other people so it's kind of same thing you have to learn and practice okay okay so initially in, the, uh, in this question as well you mentioned that you know you were kind of uh, intrigued by the freelancing domain as a whole and you know how much money people were making i think cloud as a whole is one domain which is quite underrated in terms of freelancing work because there are a lot of small scale companies who are trying to get into clouds who cannot afford like full on companies who are providing cloud services so that creates a huge market for the freelancers so tell us a little about what your freelancing journey in the cloud domain was like definitely so my my journey started out of the need because the client asked for sandeep you did dev dev very good now it's your responsibility to host it full pay for that of course they they paid for me i'm paid for all the implementations but uh, at that time uh, my first first job was to look for some people i didn't yeah. find any and they very pricey so company asked yeah. me to learn and deploy so that's how okay. started then onwards once i learned the things i see different different financing side even what work for me is actually not the financing sides 
but people reach out to me on linkedin facebook youtube yeah. and everywhere sandeep please uh, we have this uh, kind of uh, application please deploy in the car and we'll pay for 500 600 whatever is the amount in dollar they will pay okay small mm-hmm. deployment small and this is really good you can uh, like do a lot of deployment like of course is most of the rehosting thing so they are in the, you can call this rehost or migration job that they have okay. existing on premise system now they mm-hmm. want to leverage the cloud and save the cost that's why they are moving okay. to the cloud so okay. most of the cases those are the cases so and there is a lot of job if you open any freelancing site you will find endless job in the cloud domain uh, say cloud solution architect cloud support cloud implementation application development mm-hmm. a lot now okay. once experience in any field say they are in the support field so they can learn the cloud and provide the cloud support someone in the application development they should learn about the uh, cloud native application development and how to host in the cloud that's uh, or maybe any cloud specific service how to de- use that and develop application just let's say mm-hmm. for example serverless application using aws lambda similar way okay. microsoft azure also their function so this kind of services someone can learn and they can de- uh, develop or deploy the services in the particular cloud so these are the things one should learn and you'll see that the very big market right now there are companies who can't afford to hire us engineer or some high paying engineer even senior engineers yeah, they exactly for some mid to junior to mid so they can that they can fit in the budget that might be the goal who's supposed to learn something but not not able to find good project to apply they should target those companies who are looking for the less expensive people or minimum expensive people that's how mm-hmm. there is a big market going on and one should of course if someone have very good knowledge experience and uh, practical kind of experience also they will get, of course get the better opportunities so someone Definitely. but but if you don't work on any project how will <laughs> get the experience so exactly what is very important you have to first uh, go to the freelancer site bid for or, say, or uh, if someone coming uh, uh, talk with them get the project get experience and then once you have very good experience you pitch higher you will get good money at that so all okay. important there is lot of opportunities lot of possibility one should have the enough knowledge and experience to get that okay so are are there uh, are there any sort of you know i would say tips or any of those sort of things that a freelancer or someone who's just you know starting out as a freelancer in the cloud domain should keep in mind while uh, they are starting out that you would suggest yes certification play a very big role some might agree some might not agree but uh, that's the kind of basic uh, selection criteria so once suppose starting in the cloud they should target the cloud certification and not just stop there uh, there are always some latest technologies coming up as the basic things you should like, suppose someone should learning with the cloud uh, starting with the cloud you should have the basic client server communication uh, basic uh, let's say how the the compute how the storage how the networking how the security works all together will make the solution right then they have to select one particular cloud service provider and master that one to get best opportunities in that particular cloud then there will be other tools like git and say, if they want to do some programming or similar kind of thing they should learn the git if they want to work on the migration then they have to learn the docker container or suppose they want to work on big cluster like big projects like kubernetes or uh, those kind of uh, project they have to learn kubernetes so based on the 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 project they want to work on they have to learn and acquire the skills and they have to practice it there's at least the basic should be the uh, understanding of how the basic component of the cloud are just like the compute Uh, other thing is service catalog part you have to know about all the services that is available to you that knowing is the basic part then basic networking basic compute part security storage they should not learn and then you have to go for the specialization say in the migration uh, it's a container like docker uh, then the kubernetes supports is a server technology that more interested then should learn lambda or fun- as the functions those kind of things so once based on one's interest they should learn the things yeah so uh, that you know kind of sounds right so you also like started from the very scratch with devops as well like once you were working as a software developer so could you tell us a little about that entire journey of just learning devops and um, you know being good to the point where you can actually work as a freelancer as well because i believe people who are working at the company and people who are working at as a freelancer the level is there is a little bit of a difference because as a freelancer your skills are quite you know evidently visible 
you are doing everything and you know if there is a slight bit of problem you cannot blame it on someone else it is your work exactly. and all of that stuff so tell us a little about that how you you know kind of acquired your skill or polished your skills to a point where you know freelance work as a whole started coming in sure first i would say learning the skills is very important what are the skill, skills you should learn to yeah. a devops part specifically you have to learn the linux because you are going to run or host the solution in a linux uh, server so first is linux there is no other way maybe you will get windows but very very few to be honest now what's linux and self scripting because for the deployment most of the cases a devops engineer you have to handle the deployment so you should learn the self scripting for the deployment purpose or file manipulation or say other scripting or a lot of uh, things you can do with self scripting that's one then uh, you have the the very basic things actually about the devops is that the developers will be working with code and they'll be storing the code in github repo the github or uh, bitbucket or whatever the git repo they're storing so that git technology okay. the git is a code uh, versioning technology so that one should learn that's also very important then that code is there okay you have to pull the code right and in the pull code after pulling the code you have to uh, install all the modules you have to uh, run the test cases then you have to zip the final deliverable will call it uh, the uh uh the the final delivered where it should be deployed like artifact and that artifact has to be deployed using a service and it, it, like a code deploy or say even jenkins also have the deployment services <clears throat> so you have to deploy that one so that dip, the build uh, so there are multiple build solution like jenkins code build, aws code build and uh, you have to learn like one devops you have to learn that then deployments there is a again jenkins has a deployment aws code deploys a deployment uh, provider there is other many softwares whose use which will get used for the deployment so one should learn all that now specifically other than that the infrastructure where you are creating the service like servers because to host the solution you need some servers or somewhere you need to host the resources and all that also now should be automated using say uh, terraform or plumi or similar kind of uh, solution where it, it and it has to be manage also as a same way you treat the application we call it infra as a code so these are the skills that is required addition to that there is a configuration management requirement now this now these days because the, the solution will be complicated these days right and to maintain yeah. the maintain the complicated solution you need something very simpler like ansible so in ansible you manage the server patches update the server versions or this make minor configuration changes though those you can do by the ansible so these are the minimum skill set a devops engineer should have at the current scanner you can see the current as per the market current market demand so they should learn that that way they should be good okay so uh we both know that you know cloud as a domain is ever evolving like yes. uh even if you are fully trained today and you you know do not upskill yourself constantly after six months you probably will be completely outdated and you probably might not be able to find work in the you know in the market job market at all so what what would be your suggestion in terms of you know upskilling yourself with the upcoming trends that are coming in uh, in the cloud so there are each cloud service provider have their own blogs and i will suggest everyone who is who want to you know work as a cloud architect search and get a cloud engineer keep follow that blogs and subscribe to the newsletter and follow the people who are working very hard in the cloud there are a lot of people who work on the cloud technologies a lot they share their views articles and blogs i do do that <laughs> yeah so yeah uh, so there are a lot of uh, people who do that and follow them follow the articles follow the content which will make you uh, kind of stay up to date with the current uh, changes current uh, what are the current things going on the new uh, services coming up all that so follow that one follow the blogs of the cloud service provider and look at the some kind there are a lot of actually site say tech crunch hacker rank they always give something very good article on the cloud services um, devops technologies so always stay up to date with those uh, tech article side also which will be very useful okay. to stay always up to date with the kind of current cloud market and and tools and all okay okay that's great so uh, even when we talk like you just mentioned that certification as a whole play a huge role whether even if you are working as a freelancer or working in a company so what would be your top picks for certification in the devops domain yeah the devops engineer i will say uh, the focus should be on the system part more of the system uh, troubleshooting system managing and all uh, for that there is linux certification is there this, i think mm-hmm. a lot of let's provide the specifically the uh, linux foundation have the very good certification on linux that one 
Raynet certification is there for the Ansible and Linux also. So do, the, that one is very good. Uh, for the cloud part, AWS DevOps professional certification is there. Uh, similarly, as we also have the uh, DevOps certification and uh, Google also have the DevOps certification. So those should be the main target for anyone who want to get certified in the DevOps field. And the cloud and, also similarly, yeah, sorry, go and, and what about like solution, uh, cloud solutions architect? Yes, for the, suppose someone want to uh, go for the cloud solution architect or uh, this kind of position, then similarly, uh, AWS, I think if it's cloud, then do the cloud specific certification. Just for example, AWS Solution Architect Associate, and uh, then we have the AWS Solution Architect Professional. Similarly, Azure, uh, Azure also have a lot of kind of certification based on the profile, and Google also has the Associate and the Professional Certification for the cloud. So one should go by that way. So uh, what would be like a, a perfect approach for anybody who, because I think you learned all the three uh, kind of technical skills, which are in itself quite complex as a whole like when we look at them whether it's devops engineer whether it's cloud solutions architect or whether it's you know a developer as a whole so what would be your uh, uh, you know your idea about a perfect approach towards learning a new technology when you're starting from the very scratch should we directly go into the certifications or should we go for the theory first or practical what would what should be the approach on that one sure so if there is any certification available that means certification related course also available so that's actually the very good way. So just follow the certificate course, practice that, and then you certify to validate your skill, not to get the job. It's required to get the job these days. That <laughs> not just certified to uh, get the job, but certified to validate your skills that you're learning is in the right way, I would say. And then if certification not available, of course, you have to look for the courses in a lot of sites. There you find the courses. So look for the course, pract like learn the theory. You have to know the basic theory first and see how they're performing the practicals then try yourself uh, then if you have any client apply the logics there apply or you learn there because there is no there is i'm saying absolutely no alternative to practice and apply the knowledge you to learn if you do that mm -hmm. nobody can stand in front of you and see and ask you any question you can answer that very uh, very easily because you practice that and you have the practical experience not the theoretical one so both required you need go in the theory to get started and you practical to stay on top of the market so both are still Okay, so as a, as a whole, even if you're, you know, looking for courses and all of that stuff, make sure they have like hands-on labs or something of that exactly. sort in their particular courses. So you can, even if you do not have clients because you are working as a freelancer, exactly. if somebody's starting from the very scratch and do not have a developer background, any of that sort, they might not have that access to exactly. uh, maybe some, need some other lab, lab solution and all. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm now going to ask you a little controversial question as a whole. I know you are uh, currently working on AWS, but how do you think the two big cloud domains or uh, you know cloud players in the market uh, compare to each other? Uh, one being Microsoft Azure and the second being, uh, being AWS. Yeah, both both are the kind of very competitive uh, you know market player, and everyone is competing with their own services, and they are actually they're doing two things. Competing yeah. one cloud with another cloud and with their own product. You will see the innovation speed in say AWS or Azure. They have multiple versions of the same solution and they are always okay. improving the UI and all. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I know it's maybe biased one, but I like the <laughs> UI of AWS more than the Azure. But yeah, both both have their own pros and cons. Like not each cloud have like everything, or one cloud have everything. There is some services in uh, AWS really great. And there are some services in Azure really great. I will not go to the controversial part <laughs> which service it is. But one should explore both the cloud to understand mm -hmm. what they are preferring, the cost structure, the, you can say, uh, what is the best uh, solution, like which service should be the best solution for your use case. And of course, you can do the multi-cloud these days. You can have Terraform and then you can manage multiple cloud accounts yeah. and that will be easy. So one should even go for the multi-cloud Azure. It's not like only stick with AWS or only stick with uh, Azure. Move for the cloud native solution, so which you can run in any cloud. Okay, kind of dockerizing mm -hmm. the application or uh, in like uh, separate the logic from the actual code implementation. So these are the uh, these are the ways of skills you can utilize to make it more cloud native and run in any cloud. Okay, suppose I am running in the AWS. There is a resource crunch in the AWS one region, and they cannot provide you as the additional instances. We can simply utilize other uh, instances uh, in the in the same region for Azure or in the Google Cloud. So you should always there is not an easy thing to implement that yeah. one. 
But if Definitely. you can do that, you have a very robust solution, very scalable solution. So at least the medium or big company should focus on that. So both are important. Okay. Both are <laughs> kind of equal play at the moment. Yeah, the market okay. share right now, AWS is, is bigger. Then there's no yeah. So play, play it pretty safe. Yeah, <laughs> with the answer on that. <laughs> kind of. Very neutral. Okay. So, uh, so you, uh, Sandeep, as a whole, I'm pretty sure you have taken interviews as well, not only just giving them. So how, how do you structure, uh, as a, you know, as from a hiring perspective for a potential candidate, what is your entire cloud interview structure like? Because I'm pretty sure a lot of people who are hiring out there would have not the same, but a similar kind of a structure in terms of the project experiences that you're looking for, theoretical knowledge and all of the different stuff. So what, what, what is your, uh, you know, a typical cloud interview, for, even if you're, let's suppose it's a solutions architect role that you're hiring. So what would that look like? Yeah, for, uh, yeah, based on the role that I'm hiring for, my strategy would change. Uh, in general, suppose I'm hiring for solution architect or cloud solution architect, this kind of positions. Then I will look for the knowledge in compute, the knowledge in the networking, like the most focus will be in the networking. That's really a very, very important role. Then knowledge in the storage, and knowledge and the security. These are the uh, areas I'm looking for the skill set there. And uh, I'm also looking for additional skill like rehosting. I, I told like most of the, the solution, I, like the problem will be uh, related to the migration and the hosting. So those kind of question. And of course, there will be some scan device question that we normally face in the AWS exams. It will be more complicated than, of course, uh, because it's a in real interview. So. Real life question get asked, the person should answer them. And, uh, and I specifically add some practical. We ask them, okay, these are the, this is the use, uh, use case. You have the code here. Uh, you This is the Docker image. Can you host in their, uh, these places? Or you can just design how the entire flow will work. Maybe you're just the architect. You don't, don't know the solution how to implement it. But I mean, you don't know how to do it, but you know how the flow works and how to design the solution. Explain it or design it, that kind of thing we ask. And uh, addition to that, we actually, not just me and in general, all the companies prefer someone with the cloud formation experience and all. So they can, they can as a code part. It's now also they're seeking in as a cloud architect or cloud engineer role also they're seeking that. Although it's not everyone not seeking, of course, some companies seeking, but there's a preferred list. Okay, someone know it, it's better for them. So that's how I do it. So first is the theoretical basic four component knowledge the compute, storage, security, and all that. Then, of course, networking. I, I told that never the networking. Then actual real life experience, can you have a question based on the real use cases? And I want to uh, like see how they're implementing that, if possible, of course, in the, in the interviews, you can include that. That's how I do it for the cloud part. Now for the DevOps part, I check there first the Linux and C scripting skills. Then uh, I check their uh, basic programming skills. Like, they can handle, suppose I have a log file. Can they process the log file? Can they extract some data out of that? That one, uh, suppose it's uh, related to some Kubernetes. Then we'll ask like how to create the services, how to create the, uh, like set up the cluster or how to set up uh, the RESTful, uh, say you have to how to develop the RESTful APIs, how the entire architecture works, the controller, the ETDC and all that. So those, those are the things we'll ask to the, uh, the candidate. Suppose it's the infra the code, then it will be related to the, the Terraform or Pulumi, whatever is the requirement is there. So this is how we outline our question structure and we expect the at least to get a solution out of them. So that's that's kind of the, the, the pattern we follow. I think you're mute. <laughs> she wants. Yeah, sorry. So uh, is there anything apart from the technical skills that you also look into a candidate? Maybe some business oriented skills or any of that sort? Sure, sure. Actually, this this part, the basic one, actually, there is a recruiter who filtered out mm -hmm. the candidates based on that. They will have a first okay. communication. Communication is very important. We are more of the technical recruiters, right? So at the yeah. beginning, uh, we kind of the third or second stage, we normally interview people. First stage is the basic inter, uh, basic HR will call the candidate and get the basic idea, like the expectations, their communication skill. If it's good and their expectation within the range, then mm -hmm. uh, they sit in the technical interviewer question, like they hired me and I see I have a, web, so what I did, I have a website, they go mm -hmm. and uh, pay for uh, my consultation, then we yeah. do take the interview. So this kind of thing. Or maybe they contact me, we had a separate contact for this. So 
Uh, that's how we do it for the for the initial uh, selection the communication is the is a key there you have to communicate really clearly with the interview uh, the basic for over phone that phone interview you have to clear that and then uh, some cases i will say not the every time for the cloud part uh, it's not that uh, that you have to pass some online coding test and all but for the devops engineer position there is a step in between the technical recruiter uh, from the initial call is in between you have to pass the coding challenge and all so that's the requirement okay okay so is that is that the same for solutions architect as well or that's just for devops yes yeah, solution architect is one of the cloud role we just have a phone interview and then go for the technical uh, round with some technical interviews now some company have two three stages some company even have six seven stages based on the okay. positions importance they put all the filters there so it's, it's okay. changed based on the companies Okay. Okay. Great. So, um, uh, Sandeep, you also is co- have been currently uh, quite working in the DevOps domain as well. So, what would be your topics for the DevOps tools that are out there in the market? Right. So, I will always prefer cloud native solution as a tool. So, the, if you go to the CNCF uh, landscape or CNCF uh, dot uh, course, they will find lot of cloud native solutions. My target is right now use those services, open source. You can host in any cloud and kind of very good community support. That one. Now, out of that only, you have the Jenkins for the you know CI/CD pipeline. You have mm-hmm. the Terraform for the infrastructure deployment. You have Ansible for the configuration. I mean, these are my most used tool set. Other than that, since I work in you know I work in AWS stack a lot. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's the reason I become AWS. You know, I make a lot of AWS content. So okay, uh, I do work on AWS and I do love the AWS DevOps tool set. to name aws code commit code build code deploy and the pipeline so these are the my most used tool set yes okay that's that's great uh, guys we are almost uh, coming at the end of the session if you guys have any questions make sure you put them in the chat window so we can have a look at them as well okay and make sure you check sandeep's youtube channel as well just like he mentioned he has uh, is quite a following over there as well and he shares quite a lot of you know live coding marathons and all of that stuff i also had a look at them and quite interesting as a whole to see the live implementation by your coding as well so guys if you are interested in the domain make sure you check out his channel as well so uh sandeep on that part uh, what what is a devops tool chain i also like ha- had a few people ask them uh, ask that question at our part as well so what is a devops tool chain so devops tool chain is in every first of thing that every company have the own preferences now if it's a preference on the developer uh, tool of choice they will be whatever they used to for me i will say i will look at the problem first it's not like mm-hmm. i have some preference of devops tool chain means what are the tools that i use for my day to day work or deployment right that's the tool okay. chain you can call it. now that i uh, decide based on the problem i have suppose it's the serverless application deployment just for example then i will look for uh, is that uh, kind is it in the aws then i will go for either sam or i will utilize the serverless framework deployment tool chain if it's the say it's a one of the ec2 instance based deployment then i will go for the aws specific solution i will uh, prefer to store the code in github or in the aws code commit i will make the build in the aws code, uh, code build i will do the deployment using the aws code deploy and i will manage the entire workflow in the aws code pipeline now to the point suppose it's not in aws not say or may have multi cloud so you have the multi cloud uh, solution then i'll go for some solution like jenkins and jenkins plugins to manage the multi cloud deployment or maybe there are other tools also based yeah. on the requirement i've explained and use that one so based on the requirement based on the problem you have you should go for the tool chain that you select as a tool there are multiple tools out there you have to decide very carefully before selecting a solution because one actually I, even in interview also i asked one guy that uh, you have to deploy a, a solution in aws lambda how can you use ansible for that so he was like ansible how can you use that i mean ansible is ansible ansible is for the server <laughs> communi- uh, configuration management i said but you can do deployment using ansible you can write it in the plain you can do that right you have no idea so some areas if you even you don't know just say you don't know but yeah. if you just like you are very confident there is no such solution that's a big problem it's just one should have a exploration mindset and you will mm-hmm. find a lot a lot of problems a lot of different kind of solution as a solution architect or as a devops architect or solution uh, devops engineer you have to make selection between multiple solution this should be my solution best efficiency 
best not just the performance part cost part that you maintain because you might have huge performance but your budget is 100 dollar how can you achieve that yeah, <laughs> or maybe yeah. your budget is say uh, 1000 dollar but your uh, expectation is the like they have to budget of 10000 so yeah. check the budget check the key or to, the tool set for the devops you want to utilize you have mm-hmm. to make a connection between them so your solution should be cost effective performance centric and based on the business use case that's how you should de- de- define the solution yeah. that's okay oh, th- that's great i be- believe a lot of people uh, would kind of you know benefit from this particular answer as a whole as well so uh, we are almost at the end of this uh, you know kind of session so there is one question that i personally have as well devops as a whole has emerged as one of the leading you know uh, technologies of the future as well so what do you think the future holds for devops as a whole so just like any other technology field be it cloud be it say other automation uh, industry or devops is kind of a kind of combination of cloud automation and yeah. other tools and all so it will stay it will stay for many many years okay no one can guarantee mm-hmm. it will go away or it will change it will stay but one should learn the new tool set that's coming in the market right now there is an evolution going to happen based on the web3 technologies you know the blockchain yeah. ethereum and all that so you mm-hmm. have to think now of like in advance if you want to strive in the market for the next generation you have to think and decide what should be your deployment or it should be devops scanning your follow web3 handle right now is web2 but how can you handle the web3 so these are the things you have to make prepare for the future you have to stay updated with the new technologies there will be always something new coming up in the devops world okay so you have to stay updated that's the key devops will be there it's a delicate future but one should get updated with the skill set to stay valuable in the market you have to stay valuable otherwise just like any sub php is still a skill it has a very good uh, thing but it not doing that kind of uh, havoc uh, improvement just like python did or javascript did so yeah. that's why you see the market going down similar way mm-hmm. if you don't improve the skill set and all you will see yourself in a difficult situations that's that's yeah. the thing yeah, definitely. And and for our updates, just follow Sandeep or K21 Academy. We both, as as YouTube channels are coming up with all the new things that are coming up in the market. So we'll, we'll keep you updated on that part. Okay, so we have got a question from Sandeep uh, Panchagiri on YouTube. How to find remote jobs in DevOps? So l- let's make it just, you know, how to find jobs in DevOps as a whole, because I believe because of the whole COVID situation and work from home, majority of the jobs as a whole are work from home. Anyway, yes, so now it's all so first thing that every single company, every single company, I'm saying every single company have a career page in their website. Everyone. Yeah. Go there mm-hmm. and look for job opportunities. If your preference is remote, apply for the remote jobs. If your preference is the on, uh, like on, on the site, you can uh, apply for the on-site job uh, jobs. That's how you should reach. And don't stop there. If it's a company has a requirement, they must have some recruiter in the LinkedIn who is actually hiring for the position. Simply yeah. look for the company name, Simply check which recruiter position I was recruiter working in that company. Directly send an email to them. Say, I'm interested in the position. If yeah. really they have a vacancy, if really they want to hire some guy, they will definitely prefer you. This is a most underrated way of handling the things. But this has a effectiveness of a new level. Okay. Yeah. So my suggestion, apply to the career size fine. Also reach out to the recruiters who are actively recruiting for this position. You might have the better edge. Because you have the personal touch with the recruitment. You don't know when the ADA is going to process your application. <laughs> when they're going to call you. But there you're directly reaching sure, out to the recruiter. Right. You have much, much more chance of getting job other than the people or the persons trying there by the website. So do both. Not just stop there. Definitely. Yeah, and I believe like uh, Swadeep, you, uh, you can also check LinkedIn as well. There is now a uh, function. Yeah, uh, exactly. Like, uh, so LinkedIn is a job, you can... job. One can go yeah. and subscribe. But it's kind of same way. You either apply from the KDS or a LinkedIn job. And there are a lot of yeah. jobs, not just the LinkedIn and their website. A lot of mm-hmm. Monster, Nokri, so all the other places. Even freelancing, there is a lot of sites. Uh, there's the freelancing and there's all sorts of jobs. Now, the part is there. Apply anywhere possible or wherever possible. But try to reach the recruiter. My point is reach the recruiter in person. That will have a better impact. So that should be the task. Okay. Uh, we got a question from Arun. We got actually two questions. First, we'll pick up uh, the first one. So, uh, apart from the certification and practical projects, what, what else is something that a person can do to make their resume, you know, kind of stand out? 
so yeah you should have some voluntary experiences maybe you are uh, helping some non profit organizations to develop some project which will be very helpful for voluntary works uh, you should try to make some side projects okay because and maybe make it open open source so other people can see it they can check your code quality uh, and mm-hmm. or the solution quality and uh, try to make articles make videos like do this kind of stuff to of course you practice you are practicing your things and you are sharing knowledge with the world so these are the things one should do okay uh okay so we got a question we got another question i'm sorry arun that uh, i i am sorry but i cannot see the linkedin comments here so uh, what what would be uh, in order to enhance our knowledge on different architectural problems how uh, how can someone do that according to you what would so be any enhance knowledge on different aspects okay yeah. they have to practice it so there are uh, many sites specifically hacker rank Uh, I think mm-hmm. GitHub and uh, there is even I think uh, Projectile. There are a lot of sites there. You can just look for DevOps challenges sites. They there they will ask you some uh, architectural questions, some uh, challenges which you might practice to prepare yourself for those kind of things. That will be really great. Of course, there is blog channels and everything is there in the YouTube. Find it. Other than that, to practice in part, I will say uh, these kind of sites are really great. For that. I do use this kind of sites. To I also need to practice, right? It's all a changing <laughs> world, right? you have to always yeah. stay in the top so you have to be practicing yeah arun your last question we just answered so if you have uh, maybe missed it you can rewind and have a look at we will be posting this entire video on our youtube channel as well so you can check it over there as well and we will be posting the short clips to almost all the individual questions as well uh okay what's what's in the glass it's water buddy <laughs> nothing it's just water <laughs> Yeah, I, I know it's almost eight uh, forty or nine nine p.m. on a Saturday, but yeah, it's just water for now. <laughs> okay. With that said, uh, we all at the end of this session, uh, guys. Thank you very much, Sandeep, again for joining us and especially for accepting the invite, guys. If you have not checked Sandeep's YouTube channel, and if you are somebody who's working in DevOps, I don't know how you didn't come across this channel because the first thing that I searched DevOps on YouTube, hi. I directly came across this channel. He is doing absolutely incredible work with all the even whether it's live coding and all those marathons as well, and all the videos that he's done. Incredible content. If you are someone who is from our channel, make sure you go check it out. And if you are someone from his channel, make sure you check ours, uh, our exactly. you know, platform exactly. as well. <laughs> Because yes, just like yes. we mentioned as well, that uh, all the courses at K21 Academy also provide hands-on labs. Every uh, you know every course has that. Because like we mentioned, hands-on experience. Whether you are working with freelancers, obviously that's going to be better than a hands-on lab. But if you are not able to get that, hands-on activity is the most important thing. If you are going for a tech-based job to less over. So any any last pieces of Uh, advice and leave that you'd like to leave the audience with. I would say you know tech world is uh, you know very frequently change, but uh, one should also do some uh, expertization because you you can you can become a generalization for you know a lot of skill set and all. Something you have to master if you want to good get the good or the best opportunities, best paid opportunities. So if yeah. someone say what is your specialty? I have programming skill, Python, Go, JavaScript, and all that, right? I know the cloud and all. If someone asks me specifically, I will say my AWS skills are very expert level because I'm working mm-hmm. a lot of lot of projects. Similarly, one should have that expert level knowledge in something to get the highest paid opportunities. So that's yeah. one should focus. Learn all the techs. Learn like always changing world. You learn that, but have one specialty that no one can uh, kind of put a question on your skill set. That one should yeah. do. Yeah, and and in addition to that, a little bit be irreplaceable. to to summit all to summit all up as well that there's no one except you out there to has that similar set of skill set like it's not just you have just one skill just like sandeep as well if i'm out there trying to look for someone who has both devops solutions architect and a developer experience i'm, I'm definitely sure it's going to be pretty hard to replace sandeep on that but so be like sandeep in a way where you have a certain set, uh, you know set of skills that are just not easy to find in the market as well exactly Sure. Okay, with that said, thank you very much, Sandeep. And guys, if you want, if there is any other cloud influencer just like Sandeep that you would want uh, to out uh, to int for us to interview and have on our channel, please do DM us on any of our platforms, and I'll be happy to invite them over as well. So again, thank you very much, Sandeep, for uh, giving us your time, especially on a weekend, man. <laughs> We cannot forget. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed talking with you and the audience. So no worries. 
I really love to do sessions. Even tomorrow, I'll have a session in my channel. <laughs> It'll be a ski rotation. So I really love to do the sessions. No problem. Yeah, thank you very much, man. And again, thank you very much for the work that you're doing for the community, the entire cloud community as well. On that, <laughs> I love, I love to do some community and the knowledge sharing. All I really enjoy that one. That's a reason from last five, six years, and keep doing it because it just love it. So do it, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Sandeep. Bye, buddy. Okay.